Duck Fart TV. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to more War on the Sea, our United States Navy campaign, and uh, JD Duck here with Duck Fart TV, and I did it again, folks. I, uh, well, I didn't do it again. The technology did it again, where it just decided to shut down in the middle of me recording my audio, and it didn't save anything, so I wasn't able to recover it, so I'm going to have to do like I did. I think it was at uh, episode seven or eight, something like that, where I was... Um, just going to give you guys some commentary over the gameplay and chop it up and tell you what happened so you don't miss out on it completely because I at least got the recording, the footage, just didn't get my voice talking about it. So I'm going to do my best to tell the story retroactively for you folks here. So without further ado, let's roll right into it. So the very first thing that we did once we started the clock was to get a whole bunch of aircraft up in the air from the Wasp. So pretty much every opportunity we had, we'd launch aircraft, strike aircraft in this sense, so bombers and torpedo bombers. And then we would get another group up as soon as they were able, because uh, we already had our cap, um, our protection for our fleets up in the air with our wildcats. So it, we just were getting all of our strike aircraft out on this particular run. So Milne Bay was able to launch aircraft, but we didn't have any aircraft there to launch because it is only a level one airfield. We were waiting for Cooktown to have the B-17s available to try and see if we could maybe get them up in the air after that retreating task force one more time. And we did have an encounter with our Dauntless, so we actually ran into some ships here. There's six ships in total. Uh, the makeup of it was two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and two destroyers. Spotted them pretty quickly and sent all of our Dauntless in on a, a single bombing pass on just this one heavy cruiser, which I believe we identified as a Mogami class. Um, it's really small on my screen right now and my memory is terrible, so I'm, I can't remember, but I believe it's a Mogami class that we identified that as. Made sure that we took your guys' tips and lined up our strike pattern as best we could on the stern. And once we were in a decent alignment, we decided to start our strike pattern and sent our two groups of Dauntless dive in and hit the enemy. Whole bunch of our bombs hit. Uh, it was really cool. They all actually kind of simultaneously went in at once between the two groups. Uh, we lost one Dauntless in the mix. And unfortunately, this heavy cruiser, even though it took a ton of bombs, just kind of walks it off here. Um, it's definitely damaged, but it's only got moderate damage and moderate flooding by the end of it. Our Dauntless, we kept them in the area to just keep a track of that task force um, because we wanted to make sure that we could hit them again. We had Avengers and Dauntless on the way. We did finally spot that other task force, and I watched them for a second to see which direction they were going, and they were definitely fleeing. And then we had a whole series of really annoying encounters with our Kingfishers, where they're just Kingfishers being chased by Avengers. Uh, nothing happened. I auto-resolved a few of them. I checked on a few of them, and it's just, it was just a big waste of time, so I cut those out for the most part. And then you could see we got our Avengers that were actually attacked by some Wildcats, but again, we got into it and nothing happened. They weren't actually there. So our Avengers are close enough now, so we took them into tactical. And this is where things get pretty awesome. Lined them up for their attack runs at the 45 degree angle, because thanks to you guys in the tips said that that is better than going directly uh, perpendicular to them. So I didn't do a 90 degree angle. I went at a 45 and I'll let you guys see the results.
So needless to say, we absolutely just crushed those two heavy cruisers. Overkill is the best kind of kill and they sunk incredibly quick. Uh, moral of the story, when it was all said and done, we sent, I think about 20,000 pounds, yeah, 22,000 pounds down to the bottom. A Couple more annoying encounters with Kingfishers that turned into absolutely nothing. Then we did have a small flight of four uh, Vals, enemy bombers that were coming in right after the Wasp. They somehow spotted her and we're going in on attack, but luckily we had our cap up. So that was perfect, four aircraft sent four aircraft destroyed. And then very, very quickly after that, we were actually able to uh, get into tactical with our next set of Avengers that had just arrived at that task force. This one did not go nearly as well. Now, we obviously we didn't have the two larger ships as targets this time. Um, so we tried to make do with what we could and they did a really good job dodging the torpedoes. We did get one or we got a couple of hits a few duds but only one real damaging explosion So just that one torpedo did give that cruiser some moderate damage and moderate flooding, which is awesome. So, but it's not gonna do anything. They're already on their way back. We're not getting command points for just damaging that ship. Uh, everything helps in the war effort, but it's not gonna be much. And that's pretty much all that happened, guys. So we'll get you guys, I hope you caught up. I know it was really short because I had to condense it all down. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you all in the next episode. You know what to do. Smack that like button like it was the last person that you saw that threw trash on the ground just for no reason. A litter bug. Yes, litter bug. Smack the like button like it's a litter bug. And you know what we always say, folks. Until next time. Peace. Duck fart. TV.